is the aluminum can crusher that I make here in my shop. This is going to be a remake of a video I made a few months back, but I wasn't really happy with the quality of the audio. And also, I didn't show you uh, some of the things that I used to build this machine with. Uh, this time, I'll try to accomplish that. So, uh, it's all mounted on a 2x12, 3 feet long, and it weighs 60 pounds altogether. So, yeah, it makes it convenient if you want to move it from one location to the other. It's not very hard. Uh, and it's fairly compact, as you can see. Now, I'm going to I'll be removing the uh, chain guard, which I make this in my shop myself too. It's a fiberglass molded uh, cap with uh, expanded metal, aluminum metal, that you can get at the hardware store. And uh, I call it the MACC20, uh, the MAC20. And that stands for motorized aluminum can crusher and it crushes 20 cans a minute. So I'll set this aside and uh, I'll show you the components of this machine. The motor I use <coughs> is a, um, actually a hoist motor. Uh, you get these at um, Harbor Freight, that's where I get mine. Uh, they usually cost about $125. You might catch it on sale sometimes. Um, now it, it, it comes with a, um, a mounting housing. So when you get it, you'll want to take it out of the housing and remove the spool. Come to the spool of uh, uh, cable, small cable. So you just get take that off, and then on it I have a three-inch sprocket, heavy duty. And on the end of the shaft, I have a shaft support because when it's crushing a can it pulls on the shaft quite a bit so this helps prevent wearing out your bearings and your seal now the motor runs on 115 volt household current um, the RPM, the shaft RPM is 60 revolutions per minute and this works out very well I use uh, a heavy duty chain, like a motorcycle chain. Uh, I get uh, that at Motion Industries. And also, I get the 3 inch sprocket. And here I have a 9 inch sprocket. I also get it at Motion Industries. And the 9 inch sprocket has a three quarter inch bore uh, keyed and um, so you go from the 60 revolutions per minute with a three inch sprocket to a nine inch sprocket that gives you 20 revolutions or you can the same as uh, crush, crushing 20 cans a minute that's plenty fast I can make it faster but you got to have time to get your fingers out of the way when this thing is working. So, um, also, I've added a can counter. You don't have to have that, but I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, now, it counts the revolutions. So, if you crunch a can every revolution, it gives you a can count. Uh, if you have a revolution and you don't have a can in the in the slot, then it's just still going to count the revolutions. 
Yeah. In here, in the drive system, is three quarter inch key shaft, and that holds all this drive mechanism together. Now, I use pillow block bearings. They're solid aluminum cast. I get those at Granger. Uh, they're about twenty dollars a piece. This big sprocket's about seventy dollars a piece. The small one's about twenty dollars a piece, and the chain is about um, at twelve dollars a foot. And then uh, I have uh, on the ends of the, sh the shaft. I have the police, which you can get locally at most hardware stores or specialty stores. Those are nine inch pulleys, just like would be on a evaporative coolie pulleys. Actually, that's what they're for. That's why they were made. Also, I'd like to add that the motor comes with a remote, so uh, makes it real convenient. And uh, you have to be careful if you have a can counter on it. You have to be careful to always run it forward. If you run it backwards, you need to protect the can counter because the uh, push rods will come back and damage it. Okay. This is my push rods, the three quarter inch steel. This I call the hammer. And this is called the anvil. And they're made out of quarter inch steel angle. And uh, the push rods drive the hammer. And I have a guides, hammer guides, so that the hammer stays centered all the way through its cycles. Otherwise, it has a tendency to go off to one side or the other once it starts crushing the can. And I have these on here. I don't have to have these, but when you drop a can in, it keeps the can in the middle, so it won't let it roll out to the side when you'd be chasing it around. And... Uh, then here I have uh, the uh, support for the anvil. There's a lot of pressure put on that anvil when it starts crushing the can. And also this is adjustments here so if you need to make your uh, uh, crush a little a little tighter or a little looser you can adjust it here and uh, move the uh, anvil back and forth a little bit. Half inch seems to work just right and that's what I have this one set on. But if I ever wanted to change it, I could. Now I'll set up and uh, put the chain guard back on and we'll crush a few cans of this so you can see how that works.
And that's the kind of crush we get. I messed up and didn't lay the can in there straight a time or two, but still it just kept on working. So, <clears throat> if you have any questions, if you want to build one of these yourself, if you have questions uh, you want to ask me, uh, feel free to contact me uh, through YouTube and uh, I'll try my best to answer your questions. I do sell these units, uh, completed units. They're a little pricey. Uh, $975 if they're picked up at my location. So shipping would be something else too. But the thing about it, when you first put it together, you oil it a little bit, and you'll probably never have to oil it again. It requires virtually no maintenance whatsoever, uh, and it lasts forever. My my first one, uh, I still have on the end of my work table here. Uh, I don't know how many thousands of cans I've crushed with it, with just no problems at all. Uh, and uh, Thanks for watching.